Okay, so why does Subliner have so many different results? We see here in my history that I've done alignments with the same two speakers, just different DSP settings, and they all have slightly different results, different polarity, different delay. Why is that? Isn't that an error? Is there a bug? Is there a problem? Is Subliner broken? Are its results inaccurate? They're not, and let me talk you through how to understand this a little bit. So the short story is that Subliner is just always trying to find the best result in terms of delay and polarity. So it tries as many settings as it can and then returns the one to you with maximum summation and best alignment. And so if it needs a polarity inversion, then it's going to use that. What are we looking at here? Recently, Alan uploaded his Mackie SRM212 that he uses on a lot of shows and he combines it with a QSC sub and by the way, if there's any speaker that you want me to add to Subliner, one of the best ways to do that is to upload it to Tracebook. And if you want any help, I'm happy to get on Zoom with you and talk you through it. I help people with that all the time. And we have a second pair of eyes and just have someone to help you go through the procedure. It can be a lot easier. Okay, so Alan uploaded this speaker. I added it to Subliner, and actually let me just get it from the history so I don't have to fill this all out again. So here we have Alan's Mackie SRM212, and here's the sub he's gonna combine it with, and now we have four different processing presets to choose from from this sub. If you're familiar, it just has some switches on the back that you can choose, right? So which one of these is better? Subliner can help you do this research. So you could start with one of these, you can take a look at the result, you can look at the settings, you can take a look at the plot, you can look at the bandwidth here. So we have a nice, big, wide crossover region. Maybe you like that, maybe you don't. You take a look at this and you see, well, the alignment here, it seems like it's only within 60 degrees in this little area here. What if we switch to a different processing preset? So it runs the alignment again. Well, now we need a polarity inversion. Well, maybe you don't like that. So maybe you don't like this result. Maybe that's your preference, that's fine. Maybe we take a look at the limits here and we see, well, for this one, we can really adjust the sub level by 16 dB. I like that, or maybe I don't like that. And I take a look at the plot and I see, oh, the alignment extends further here. So we're within 60 degrees for a wider region. Maybe I like that better. So all different kind of things here that based on your preference could help you pick whether or not you like the results or which DSP setting that you want. But as we can see, we're getting returned different results here. So to make this more clear, and this is what I recommend that you do, if you wanna research this a little bit and see why this is happening, it's really easy to do this. Just download the files from Subliner and drag them into your audio analyzer. So what I recommend you do is get this one and then the coplanar sub. What does that mean? One really nice service that Subaligner does for us is it, equalizes the distance offset. Because what happens is people upload things to Tracebook, this one's measured at 2.3 meters and the sub was measured at five meters or something like that. And so Subaligner equalizes that. It's like the speakers were measured at the same distance. If you download this sub, it'll be aligned already. But if you download this one, then you can practice the alignment. So that's what I've done over here in Crosslight. Now I've already been playing around with this, so let me bypass all these settings. So if you were to do nothing to this pair of speakers, this Mackie and this QSC, this black line here is the result that you get. And you, we can see that this is not optimized because this dotted line here represents the result that we'd like to get. And what I wanna say first about analyzing these kinds of results is that we need some sort of comparison, right? I think the first biggest struggle that most people have who are getting into audio analyzers is that they take a measurement or they look at some data and they say, what does this mean? Is this good? Is this bad? What do I do with this? Without a comparison, I think there's nothing to do. There's no work that I do with an audio analyzer that's in the abstract. It's always related to some kind of comparison. So to get started, I need some kind of target. And this is the target that Subaligner uses. Why does it use this specific target? I developed this target after watching people use Subliner in the field. And I found that people always turn up their subs. And when you turn up the sub, what does that do? It shifts the crossover region up. 
And so now we need alignment in a new area than we did before we turned up the sub. So what I get Subaligner to do is just artificially turn up the sub by using this kind of target so it shifts the crossover region up. So that's why I'm looking at this kind of target here, but you could use whatever target you want, your preferred target, and then you can find your own preferences here in terms of alignment based on that target. Okay, so here's where we're at. So what does Subaligner do? Subaligner just experiments first with adding delay. So let's just go out to five milliseconds and I need to unmute this. And so what we see now is this black line is gonna start to change as I change the amount of delay. So I'm adding less and less delay to my red guy here and we're seeing different results, none of them very good. And so then Subaligner says, well, let me see if I can find something better with a polarity inversion. And immediately it gets better and says, oh, I'm gonna start heading in this direction. Okay, I like this. Okay, great. This is the best result I can find with maximum summation, best alignment. This is the result that I'm going to return. And this is the one that I'll put into the results for the user, for you that you see on the screen here. And so this suggests 1.95 milliseconds and a polarity inversion. So 1.95 milliseconds. By the way, practice in the field, I recommend that you always put the polarity inversion in the sub. Why? Because it affects less things downstream. If you put the polarity inversion in the main, then you'll have to put a polarity inversion in every other speaker that relies on the main. So it's, I'm doing that here just be, because it's easier for me, but in the field, I'd actually put that on the sub. You can do it either way, just talking to you about ease of workflow in the future. So this is the result that it came up. So that sort of answers your first question about how to analyze these results. Number one, just know that Subaligner is always just trying to look for the best settings in terms of delay and polarity, and that's what it's gonna to return to you. And number two, you can look at how that works by downloading these traces, importing them into your audio analyzer, and then either putting in Subaligner suggestions or finding your own results. And let me show you how to do that in REW because I know a lot of people have REW, but maybe they don't have Crosslight yet. By the way, I'm teaching a Crosslight workshop in a couple of weeks on November 15th. So that'll be a free live stream on my YouTube channel and on my Facebook page. The great thing about REW is that you can just drag these in and there they are. I always reorder these. So I have main and then sub. We go to all SPL so we can see both of them and we go to our alignment tool and we make sure we have the correct ones selected. And now we can do the same thing here. So we can put in the subaligner suggestion here, 1.95 milliseconds and a polarity inversion, and we get the same result. And we might hit align sum, and then now we might try to find a better result. We say, why is subliner using a polarity inversion? Let's take that out. Let's use the auto solver here, and or, uh, let's reset all of this actually. Let's now, so I've reset everything. There's no polarity inversion. Now let's just try playing around with the delay of the sub here. Is it getting better? Is it getting worse? There we go. Maybe that's about the best result we can get without a polarity inversion. And we see that we're missing out on some summation here by not using a polarity inversion. But you could still come up with your own result. You say, hey, great. This is polarity normal preset. So maybe you create two, maybe you audition them, maybe you just have two that you can always use. It's good to be flexible. We don't have, there doesn't have to be just one alignment solution. Okay. The next thing I wanted to talk about is your filter settings. I guess a big red flag is here, don't take subaligner settings and then apply them on top of whatever your custom filter settings are. You have to use the exact settings here in subaligner that you've specified, namely this speaker with this processing preset and this speaker with this processing preset. If you add any filters on top of that, it's going to go out of alignment. Let me show you what I mean. So we've got our alignment here. I'm gonna add some random filter at 100 hertz. And now we're out of alignment, right? We can see that here's the amount of summation we should be getting, and now it's gone down like this. There is a way that you can add filters after subaligner. And I guess I should show you that right now, and then I'll address Allen's filter settings. Bypass this. The easy way to deal with filters, if you don't know much about them, is to just apply symmetrical filters 
after you have your alignment. By the way, if you want to understand this stuff in more depth, sorry to keep plugging my own stuff, but if you go to sounddesignlive.com and then you go to the training here and then you go to online courses, one of my best online courses for this is Intro to the Phase Graph and then Phase Alignment Science Academy. So this is like step one and then step two. If you take both of these, you'll understand all of this in much more depth. Okay, yeah, the shortcut is to basically just apply symmetrical filters to something that is already aligned. So I've got my measurements here. I've applied the subliner recommendation so that I have a nice alignment here. And now I can pretty much apply symmetrical filters all day until I find something that I like. So let's say that I say, oh great, this is aligned, but I want a smaller crossover region. I don't want a two point something octave crossover region. I want something smaller that's too much interaction for me. And maybe I tested it and I don't like the sound of it and it doesn't hit my preferred target. Fine. So let's apply symmetrical filter. Recommendation is to pick some region with high coherence somewhere around the center of the acoustic crossover region. So you could just eyeball it, or if you want, you could open up the plot in Subaligner and it has drawn the center in for you. So it's got a little C there for center and that's around 80 Hertz. So let's put a second order filter around 80 Hertz. And you said you were using second order Butterworth filters. So I'll apply one of those. And you can see that we've gone out of alignment where generating some phase shift with this filter. And then we go to the sub and we'll do the same thing at 80 Hertz with the sub. And I said you could apply symmetrical filters. If you see this happen, you know that you need a polarity inversion. Why is this happening? We applied a second order high pass filter generating 90 degrees of phase shift up. And then we applied a second order low pass filter generating 90 degrees of phase shift down. So now we are 180 degrees apart. But if we just apply a phase, sorry, polarity inversion, or just take this polarity inversion out, now we've recovered that. So one takeaway here is anytime you're applying symmetrical second order filters, you will always need a polarity inversion to get them back. So maybe you say, hey, this is great. Now I have reduced the amount of interaction between these two. I have a more narrow crossover region. And now I'm gonna save this to my processor. So now maybe you have two settings, one with a wide crossover region, one with narrow. Then you get out your speakers, you plug in the presets, and you audition some music and some color pulses, things that really just hone in on this area. And or you could just deploy these in the field, right? So you could just have these two presets, you get your sound system set up and then during sound check, maybe you flip back and forth between them. I just wanna have, I just want you to know that this is can be flexible. It doesn't have to be that subliner is the one result that I use all the time. You can come up with your own presets here. And so I'm trying to give you the ability to do that. 
Okay, so we just applied some symmetrical filters and maybe we like this result. Now I wanna go back, you know what? I should probably show you how to do this in REW2 in case that's what you're using. So let's mute this. So it's pretty easy, you just select this guy, you go to Hue Filters, and then you select your filter here. I think we did Butterworth, a second order, is that correct? Yes, second order Butterworth at 80 hertz. And we can see it's predicted here, but then to actually work with this in the main window, we need to generate measurement from predicted. And now we can see we have a new measurement down here. So we hide this one. And now we're gonna be working with two and four. So we go to alignment tool and we're gonna be working with two and four. But now we have main and sub backwards. So we'd actually wanna change this to four and two. Anyway, now you have a filter applied virtually that you can now play around with and see what the alignment looks like. Okay, so that's how you can play with that in REW. Here's how you could look at this. So these are the settings that you were using. And so either in REW or Crosslight or whatever, let me just bypass everything that we have here. Okay, so here's where we started. And your settings are second order Butterworth at 100 Hertz. Okay, so there's your first filter and second filter. And look at this. I think unknowingly you were improving the alignment between your two speakers by applying these filters. Now I want to caution you against just using filters without really knowing what you're doing. Most of the time speakers out of the box from the same brand at least are designed to work together and you shouldn't have to do anything. But you also don't want to apply filters and accidentally create a gap. So here we still have plenty of overlap that we can work with, but it's possible that you are unnecessarily applying filters and creating a gap in the response and that's not going to help you. Okay, so this is the result that you have. And if you wanted to play around with this, again, you just download those traces from a subaligner that are coplanar. You can look at your results here and then you can play around with even improving this by maybe delay or polarity. So maybe we have a slightly better uh, result there. And again, the same thing in, sub in REW, you just apply those filters to each trace, you generate measurement from predicted in the EQ window, and then you can play around with the alignment using the alignment tool. So I hope this has been helpful. Let me just give a quick summary Number one, the reason that you get different results with different DSP settings in Subliner is that different DSP settings will result in a different phase response. And so if we're looking at phase alignment, then of course we'll need different settings to get that alignment. So if you change the filter from 80 to 100 Hertz, you're going to need different settings. So that's why when you choose a different DSP preset here, then you might get a different result. So when you're looking over your the, all the different possibilities that you've tried, don't be worried, but you might wanna play around with it. So you might go to that result, download those traces, import them into your audio analyzer and apply filters. And the summary from the filters is that if you don't know much about filters or you wanna start playing with them, but you want to be more cautious, then do the alignment first or use the alignment from subaligner and then apply symmetrical filters, making sure that you are always maintaining that best alignment. Okay, I hope that's been helpful. Please let me know what questions come up for you. And as always, I'm really curious about suggestions that you might have to make subaligner an even better tool. All right, thank you.